The Democrats and the Republicans are facing off and the election is going to be in November, but it seems like an eternity until then. But the Democrats are playing the same playbook they've used in the last two major elections. How do they do it? Before there is federal funding for their opponents during the hiatus period, <clears throat> the Democrats pound the daylights out of their opponent. They did it to Bob Dole and they did it to Mitt Romney. And they begin to question their character, their abilities, their compassion, and all the rest of it. And it's subtle and it's devastating. Then by the time <clears throat> the funding from the federal government comes down and their opponent is able to pick up steam and begin to advertise, he or she is already dead in the polls. That's the game, and that's being played out once again. Same playbook, same deal that have, have, we've seen in two cycles, and for some reason the Republicans haven't caught on yet. I don't know why, but it's there so clearly. Well, after falling in the polls and trailing in the money uh, situation, Donald Trump is trying to get back on track for his campaign. He sacked his campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski, and his team is getting ready for a long battle, but he's way behind in fundraising, and he's certainly behind in the attack ads that have been filling the airwaves. Wendy. That's right. Trump, he's <coughs> meeting with nearly a thousand Christian leaders behind closed doors. Caitlin Burke has that story. It's billed as a conversation with the candidate. Today, hundreds of Christian leaders meet with Donald Trump to ask questions and learn more about the presumptive Republican nominee. Regent University's Dr. Jerson Moreno Riano says he thinks Trump will try and unite the evangelical leaders behind some core issues. The whole question of dignity of life and pro life issues, the question of same sex marriage, uh, the, the liberty of conscience and freedom of uh, religion and uh, liberty principles, those are some of the things that I think are cutting across the wide evangelical spectrum. Meanwhile, only a day ahead of today's meetings with evangelicals, a major shakeup for the Trump campaign, with Trump firing his campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski. The move comes among reports of disagreements and infighting among the staff. Now there's speculation that it was Donald Trump's most trusted advisors, his children, who wanted Lewandowski gone. I think it's fair, but I think, you know, in many respects, he was coming to that on his own. And, we, we, you know, we were there to help, you know, augment that and really, you know, think it through with him. Republican strategist Paul Manafort is taking over the campaign. As the Trump team tries to get back on track and he meets with evangelicals, the Wall Street Journal reports he's also set to announce a religious advisory board this week. The new group of 20 to 30 people will be among the religious leaders he meets with today. One of the people likely to be named to that board, Paula White, played a lead role in organizing today's meeting and the board itself. She told CBN News that Trump is looking for counsel from religious leaders. He has sought and he's asked for the wisdom of an executive council to be put around him that is faith-based, that represents so many different um, communities of us within Christianity and then to form an advisory board. And I'm really excited about that. Among other potential picks to the board, Jerry Falwell Jr., the president of Liberty University, and Ronnie Floyd, president of the Southern Baptist Convention. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. Well, we'll have a report tomorrow on that meeting. I apparently was part of the host committee, but I didn't go, and uh, I hope it's a success. Well, in other news, a young British man has been stopped after he allegedly tried to kill Donald Trump in Las Vegas. John Jessup has that story. That's right, Pat. A 19-year-old from the United Kingdom is accused of trying to kill Donald Trump at a rally in Las Vegas. Police have charged Stephen Sanford with planning Trump's assassination for about a year. Reports indicate he had been living in the United States illegally after overstaying a visa. Secret Service said Sanford stopped to tell a police officer he wanted an autograph from Trump and then tried to take the officer's gun. He was charged Monday with committing a violent act. Well, China has taken the lead in supercomputing, building by far the world's fastest supercomputer. China now has 167 of the top 500 in the world, two more than the United States 165 supercomputers. Just 15 years ago, China did not have any on the list. The newest, fastest model runs completely on Chinese-designed supercomputers. Analysts say it shows just how far China has come and that the Asian giant could be threatening America's position 
as the world's leader in technology. Well, do unborn babies feel pain? That question is at the center of a controversy of a decades-old study published by the Journal of the American Medical Association. It examined whether and when an unborn child begins to feel pain, like the pain of being aborted. As Lori Johnson explains, there are serious concerns about the credibility of the study, which has been cited by the abortion industry. The Journal of the American Medical Association is refusing to retract a study about fetal pain. The article, published in 2005, concluded unborn babies do not feel pain before 29 weeks inside the mother's womb. The study has been touted by those who support late-term abortions. People taking issue with the study called for its retraction based on both ethical and scientific considerations. James Agresti, a public policy fact checker who requested the retraction, told CBN News the authors of the study failed to disclose they're directly linked to the abortion industry. The authors, if you read it, says no financial, uh, no financial disclosures. One of the authors was the medical director of the, an abortion clinic. Okay, two of the other authors, one served as an attorney for NARAL and another also worked in an abortion clinic. But JAMA said the information that we have indicates the authors complied with the journal conflict of interest requirements in 2005. Furthermore, Agresti refuted the study's main conclusion that a developed cerebral cortex is necessary to feel pain. But what science has clearly shown within two years of that paper being published, two medical journals, peer-reviewed medical journals, published papers saying that's absolute nonsense. You do not need your cerebral cortex to be conscious. And in fact, we know that for a fact because some, some children have a disorder where they're born without a cerebral cortex. And these, these children, absolutely, they're conscious, they smile, some things make them unhappy, make them cry. In fact, they're so normal that sometimes you don't even know they have the condition until months later when developmental milestones are missed. In response to the subsequent articles, JAMA said although they may add to the existing evidence on a topic or propose alternative theories, that new information does not require retraction of previous review articles. Although the medical community is not united on when an unborn child begins to feel pain, a large number of health professionals concur it's at 20 weeks gestation. That's why 12 states have passed the Pain-Capable Unborn Child Protection Act to protect unborn babies from painful abortions after 20 weeks. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Thanks, Lori. Pat, 12 states and counting. Well, they call it the abortion distortion. There are just a scheme of lies that keep filling the airways. The, uh, I don't know what it is about this culture of death that we have here that just it delights in killing people, but that's the way it is. They want to kill babies. They want to put to death old people. I mean, it's the whole idea of death, and they seem to revel in it. And they seem to have no end to the deception that goes on in terms of covering up what they're doing. Uh, just to think that when they were selling body parts out of Planned Parent clinics, that, that they got a judge who wanted to uh, arrest the people who took the pictures to reveal what they were doing. I mean, it's this kind of thing going on. And uh, it's uh, why... It's a culture of death, and you, you have to look at the spiritual roots of some of this and say, well, the enemy of our soul is, is Satan, and he hates people. He hates human beings, and the idea that if humans can kill other humans, and the devil wants to do everything to help it. How many have we killed so far? How many babies? 50 million, 55, maybe 60 million. The numbers are so high, it's hard to keep up with, but it's a shocking holocaust. And uh, we as Americans seem to think it's okay. Well, it's not okay. And one day, a righteous, holy God is going to demand an accounting for every drop of blood that has been spilled of innocent, unborn babies. And we just keep in mind, when it happens, it's going to be awful. John? Pat, in health news, eating just a few more servings of plant-based foods like vegetables every day and cutting back on animal-based foods like meat and dairy could substantially cut your risk of type 2 diabetes. Those are the findings from extensive studies involving 200,000 men and women. 
The study's lead author says it doesn't take a major shift in eating habits. Just replacing one or two servings of animal-based foods with some vegetables can improve your chances for better health. Pat, arming moms and dads everywhere with yet another argument to get their kids to eat their veggies. Um, you know, a lot of kids like veggies if you give them to them. Good veggies are very tasty. You like and veggies? fruit. Well, my fruit. niece and nephew were visiting yeah. over the weekend, and my my niece loves fruit. I mean, she mm -hmm. she likes ice cream too, but she loves strawberries and oranges and watermelon and cantaloupe. A lot of kids don't yeah, like yeah. cantaloupe, so you know it was re really refreshing well, to see I'm that. Glad. Well, they they also like they like carrots and they like peas and they like broccoli. They like all these things if if you just give them to them early enough, but. <clears throat> we're we're I mean we're in a in a McDonald's type of uh, environment where eating hamburgers is the American way. Yeah, if you get hungry enough, it'll taste <laughs> yeah. really good. Well, well, I like vegetables. I like beans, <laughs> particularly. All right.